to this thing about Nikki Haley uh, and her <laughs> idea about cognitive tests for older politicians is kind of cute. I mean, she really is one to talk, isn't she? All that inane and insane rhetoric and imperialist propaganda she spouted at the UN as the US blowhard in chief, right? I mean, she's probably just positioning herself to run for uh, president in 2020 and hinting not so subtly at Biden's dementia or whatever, but she's really attempting karma. Who is she kidding? Could she pass her own cognitive test? Could any of them pass any reasonable test that counts? Like, uh, do you serve the people? <laughs> it's funny. In Iran, China, other systems, uh, politicians are all scientists. Here they're all lawyers, right? And Shakespeare's famous solution, notwithstanding, let's first, let's kill all the lawyers. Um, a lawyer does not equal bad, necessarily, but it is good training for the hustle that masquerades as politics in the U.S. They're all either batshit crazy, power hungry, or completely sold out to the money interests, and mostly some combination of, of all three. Um, I know, of course, <laughs> I'm exaggerating for comic effect and speaking uh, partly tongue in cheek, but only partly. Uh, especially in the 40 years since Reagan has been president in one persona or another, you basically have 535 clones of, of, of Reagan in varying costumes, right? And, and I'm from Salem. We just, uh, you know, survived Halloween. So I can indulge this metaphor a little more. They come in vampires or bloodsuckers, clowns, zombies, uh, mummified uh, relics, the whole gamut. Scary, clever, hilarious, fake, things that just won't die. Basically all Halloween all the time. I mean, even the most milquetoast social democrat policy, uh, let alone you know a sweeping radi radical effort to reset the balance of wealth or power, is it comes to nothing because politicians can't deliver anything without a mass movement behind them. The people have to lead and pull the politicians along, and that is such. A, a, a mirage and so unattainable that it might as well be a pipe dream. How many, uh, twice, twice I can think of that it happened in U.S. history, the New Deal and the Civil Rights Act, both relied on huge mass movements and both had been completely dismantled once the rich regained their footing and pressed their advantage. I mean, it, 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 to be honest, the New Deal itself was, you know, it, it, despite its Keynesian roots, <laughs> 10 times as much government money was given to corporations for the war effort than was spent on social programs. So it, you're, it, we've been playing trickle down all along. I mean, uh, it, it isn't much of an exaggeration to say that the only thing that trickled down from the overflow of Reagan's demented brain is the shitty neoliberal ideology uh, religion, really, preaching the market as the solution to everything. It's like it's a cabal, it's a, a, a cartel, a syndicate, really. Now, uh, 40 years later, policy on every level is infected with this delusion that a rising tide lifts all boats, uh, <laughs> despite the ubiquitous and glaring evidence to the contrary. And there is virtually no variation from the dogma, and there's no longer any imagination allowed. That is the solution, the market. So in addition to the 535, virtually every executive, every president, governor, mayor, county commissioner, down to the local level is some version of this Reaganite uh, clone, or clown, if you prefer. Um, so local politics often winds up being the trench war where this plays out and where any uh, opponents of this established rule are outgunned, outfunded five, six, ten to one. And they, they call this democracy. They call those elections. But 
the local level Pauls who partly or also serve the money interests and all this talk about stakeholders and everyone around the table just wind up putting a smiley face on capitulating to the owners, owners of capital, of property, of the political process itself. <laughs> because you can't spar with the ruling class. You can't find middle ground with the all powerful who want it all. It's just like, uh, remember Malcolm X, stick a knife in my back nine inches and pull it out six. That's not progress. If you pull it all the way out, that's not progress. Progress is healing the wound that uh, the, the blade uh, made. These are not our friends and certainly not the allies of the people. And you can't placate them by making the best deal or a better deal than the other guy, whatever. So, yes, that shitty condo high-rise project will go through eventually. No, your pension won't be increased. And no, you won't see any uh, relief in your tax burden. And you won't see any meaningful attempt to reverse or even stem the mushrooming inequality. Because the whole idea of neoliberalism is to create this civil service class, like an army. The bad guys always win, and those who think they wield power only wind up enabling the acceleration of wealth transfer to the top. It's to put a believable cover to the lie that power lies with the people, when it, it clearly does not. So democracy is the fig leaf of capitalism in the U.S. to give us uh, just enough to stave off rebellion and keep the money tap flowing. That's what they care about. And as such, this is literally the gateway to a fascism. Because when the people do wake up and realize we've been swindled, then the mask comes off, and then it is literally uh, blood in the streets. You know, George Jackson said way back in 1970 that for black people in the U.S. and the global South generally, fascism had already arrived. But make no mistake, <laughs> if they don't get what they want, the rich owners of this country have absolutely zero qualms about lowering the boom on you, me, anyone. Anyone who effectively challenge, challenges their, their rule. Because in the end, they don't give two shits about your auntie's diabetes or your son's student loans. This just is. If the rich people ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And they will let you know it loud and clear. So... I guess talking about sanity or uh, cognitive ability in the U.S. political system is a non-starter, you know. I remember a political cartoonist. I can't remember which one or I'd give him credit. But he once drew a cartoon. We put a sign above the voting booth that uh, parroted Dante's inscription on the gates of hell. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. And that is not comedy and not an exaggeration. Boom. <laughs> 